Hi, I am continuing the talk on carbon sources. In the previous video, we have discussed the, some of the important carbon sources. In this video, I am going to continue the discussion on that. So, one other carbon source is cellulose. As we know, cellulose is mainly found in cell wall of the plants and it is found as a lignocellulose. Uh, the thing is that when comparing the starch and the cellulose, is made, both of them are made up of glucose uh, subunits, but they have different types of linkages. So starch is easily metabolized by the many microorganisms, but cellulose is not that widely utilized by the microorganism. It is more resistant to degradation. So in the fermentation also, most of the microorganisms won't use cellulose directly. So in order to use cellulose, we should convert it into some other usable form. But if we could uh, convert cellulose into some of the uh, glucose or something like that, it is a renewable biological resource. It can be found widely. Uh, if you just look in out, uh, look into the nature, you can find cellulose everywhere. In the grass, in the wood, in the leaf, everything uh, cellulose is there. So there are so many researches going on how to convert this cellulose into glucose. Once we get the glucose, we can convert it into the fuel. So that will be more economical and more bio-friendly, uh, environmental friendly. And the cellulose seen as a lignocellulose components in plant cell wall and it contains cellulose along with hemicellulose and lignin. And this lignin-like components are very difficult to degrade by the microorganism. And this lignocellulosic materials are widely available from agriculture, then forestry, industrial and domestic waste. So it is very easily available, it's very cheap. But the thing is that the conversion of cellulose to glucose is a bit difficult. Only very few microorganisms can utilize lignocellulose directly. And so what we do, we take the lignocellulose and do some treatment to convert this cellulose into glucose. So that's what called a pretreatment. So we have the carbon source as a cellulose. Before using it as a carbon source, we will convert using chemicals or using enzymes, we will convert this cellulose into glucose. So and with that glucose is used as a carbon source. In some cases, we can use the cellulose directly as a carbon source. And uh, basically, especially when we are cultivating mushrooms, we are using cellulose materials directly at the carbon source. That type of fermentation is called a solid substrate fermentation. The fermentation is done in solid media instead of liquid media. And there are different sources of uh, lignocellulosic materials are there. One is wood molasses. Uh, wood molasses is basically made by uh, converting uh, cellulose in the sawdust by acid hydrolysis and we take the sawdust and uh, go for a acid hydrolysis and which is will give 4 to 5 percent of reducing sugars and this will we go for concentration and enrichment and after concentration we will get the 60 to 65 percent of fermented sugars so first we will take sawdust go for acid hydrolysis and after that we will go for concentration and enrichment so that process will give us 60 to 65 percent of fermented -like sugars one other source of uh, cellulose is rice straw rice straw contain crude proteins crude fibers lignin cellulose and some minerals like calcium potassium phosphorus sulfur and magnesium it is used for the solid substrate fermentation and uh, single cell protein and mushroom cultivation one other carbon source is alkenes. Alkenes uh, are basically, we get it from the petrochemical industries. It is mixed of N alkenes with the carbon 10 to carbon number 10 to 20 are used in the industry. Its cost is basically depending on the prevailing oil price. If the crude oil price is high, the alkenes cost will be high. If the oil price is low, it will also reduce. And the most widely used alkene is methanol. We know the properties of the methanol. Uh, it is a most it is more preferred than methane methane is a gas methanol is a liquid so methanol is more preferred and uh, the advantage is high purity methanol is readily available it is in the market we can purchase the high purity methanol and it is completely miscible in the media in the water so there is no miscibility issues uh, and it contain high percentage of carbon energy content when we see the uh, properties of methanol, it has high energy content. For small volume, it has it, it gives more energy to the uh, microorganisms. So the advantage is that 
uh, we don't need huge formulas. It occupy only less space. Then it's relatively cheap. Uh, but the thing is that high concentration, concentration of methanol is toxic to the microorganism, just like where we are using ethanol uh, in hand sanitizers and everything. If you are using high quantities of methanol in the medium, it will uh, damage the cell membrane of the bacteria and it will kill the bacteria. So we cannot use high concentration. Uh, but the other factor is that it is a readily utilizable uh, carbon source. So it need when if you are using methanol as a carbon source, uh, the oxygen demand will be high and the uh, heat production will be also high. And we cannot use this uh, for the production of secondary metabolites, but it can be used for the production of biomass and some primary metabolites. One other advantage of using methanol as a carbon source is that effluent treatment and the downstream processing is very easy. Methanol is a pure compound. It's not like molasses or uh, sulfate waste liquor. Uh, the, all of these compounds are composed of many different types of proteins, carbohydrates and minerals etc. Methanol is comparatively a pure compound. So downstream processing is easy and the effluent treatment is also very easy. Next we have alcohol. Different types of alcohol can be used as a carbon source and the most widely used alcohol for the fermentation is ethanol. Uh, ethanol is less toxic than methanol and uh, it can be either used as a main carbon source or co-substrate. Sometimes it is the main carbon source but some in other cases we can use as a core carbon source to supplement the main carbon source. Uh, it is not generally used in many fermentation because it is very expensive in nature. But in some cases we are using it especially for the production of acetic acid. Acetic acid is basically produced by the bioconversion of the ethanol. So that's for ethanol. And next we have fats and oils. I know you, most of you know the difference between fats and oils. Fats are the lipids which are solid in nature at room temperature and oils are the uh, lipids which are liquid in nature at room temperature. Further, most of the fats are obtained from animal origin and oils from the plant origin. And of course, there are exceptions are there. The main advantage of fats and oil is that they are energy rich. It has an energy content of 2.4 times higher energy content than carbohydrates. So uh, the amount we need for the particular fermenter will be less. Like if you are, as I said before, the carbon sources are the most bulking compound in the uh, fermentation media. We need maybe need in the 70 to 80 percent of media is composed of the carbon source. If you are using carbohydrate, uh, like the volume should be very high because in order to satisfy all the energy needs. But in case of uh, fats and oils, it is has more energy content. It is 2.4 times more energy content than carbohydrates. So we need to use only low volumes. So it occupy very low volume uh, and uh, the fermenter size can be reduced and we can also use it in fed batch operations i think you will uh, i guess you all remember what is a fed batch process is in fed batch process during the time of fermentation we are adding little bit of the medium but we are not able to drawing anything so it can be used in fed batch operations and the fat cell oils has an additional benefit of its antiform activity the most of the time when we are using a fermenter there will be some provision for the mixing of the medium in the form of agitator when we are mixing a medium, the most of times what happens, there will be foaming. The foam will be generated in the uh, fermenter. So we need to add the antifoam compounds. Fats and oils are itself containing the antifoam properties. So we don't need to add any antifoam compounds into the medium when we are using fats and oils as a uh, carbon source. Uh, the animal fat, which is basically solid in nature at room temperature, is not generally used for fermentation. We are mostly using plant oils or fish oils. Uh, plant oils can be either used as a primary or supplementary carbon source uh, and it is mainly used in the antibiotic production. It is not readily used as uh, carbon source. Uh, the microorganism need to process the issue, the fats before utilizing it. Most commonly used plant oils in the industry includes cottonseed oil, maize oil, olive oil, palm oil, rapeseed oil and soya oil. And this Oil, oils basically contain oleic, linolenic and linolenic acid. So that's all are the carbon sources which are generally used in 
bioprocess industry. In some cases, we may be using one uh, carbon source as the sole carbon source. That means the media only contain a single carbon source. In some other cases, we cannot use a single carbon source. What we do, we will combine two, three carbon sources to satisfy the needs of microorganism. Or we can use a main carbon source along with the supplementary carbon source. So even though we have only uh, we discussed so many carbon sources, there are too much more to discuss. And we can also go for the combinations in different proportions. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.